is a singer, actor, and pop icon. For the last 10 years, he's been a star of the Hong Kong entertainment industry, and now he's taken his career to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Edison Chen. <laughs> Chung Guan Shi. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Thank you, you literally, you, you literally me. just landed a few hours ago from Los Angeles. Yeah, right? just straight off the plane. Straight off the plane here. Good trip for you. Thanks, man. <laughs> See, we appreciate that. Thanks for coming out to Asia and Cut. Yeah. Now let's tell the story. So you were discovered at the ripe old age of 19. Yep. And you went out clubbing with yeah. some friends, right? Yeah. And for the next 10 years after that. You became a big movie star, pop star, rapper, fashion icon, CEO of a couple of companies. Have you ever sat back and thought, gee, what if I didn't go out that night? Yeah, actually I have definitely because, you know, I never really thought about doing entertainment ever. Um, my father actually really wanted me to do entertainment when I was 15, 16, always pushing me to go do the Hong Kong pop thing. And, um, you know, I, I really wasn't ready for that at that moment. I, I thought I was a little too young, but, um, that, that summer I came back, I had actually gotten a job offer when I was out partying with my friends. What was the offer? Um, it was to do a commercial for Citibank, and um, they were gonna fly me to New York, you know? And I was like, wow, you know, I get a free trip to New York, I get paid also, I can use my money and go to Japan, because I, I'm, I'm a Japan lover. After that, I had a bunch of offers from, from people that they said they wanted me to be in the entertainment industry. So are you sure? Because I've never taken drama classes. I've never been in a play. Are you sure you want me to do this? It took me around two months to contemplate. I went back to Vancouver, sat with my mother and my friends, and you know, my 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 grades weren't so great. <laughs> so I decided to take that leap and, and and really just test the water out. So that's what did it. You grew up in Canada. Grew up Father in encouraged it. The grades were, ah, let's go. Let's jump into the spotlight. Yeah. So you were thrust in there. Yeah, I was thrust in there. They put me through seven, eight months of intense training. So I trained with the Jackie Chan stunt team. They made me dance and sing in Japan. And um, I kind of picked up a little bit of what it takes to be an entertainer. So you obviously get a lot of scripts, though. So what is it that makes Edison Chin say, yeah, I got to do this one? This one makes me tick. I'm doing it. Um, I, I, I just want to try something that's more challenging and stuff. Like, you know, some, some, some roles that I actually would love to do right now are Psychomaniac Killers. Um, well, who wouldn't? Yeah. <laughs> you let go of yourself. Uh, and maybe something maybe like on, along the lines of maybe a uh, homosexual role. Another one. It's got to be a tie on the list. Really? Maybe a psychomaniac homosexual. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know if I could handle that You much. don't want to put it all together? No. It'd be a good movie. No, yeah. I would definitely go. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, That's you know, idea. we could talk afterwards. All I've been right. looking at a little producing myself. Please. So I understand you've just put out a new single. It's new to everyone, but it's not new to me. Um, I recorded that song maybe two and a half years ago. Um, something happened in my life that I had to step away from Asia, and before that happened, <laughs> uh, before that happened, um, maybe three weeks before that, I had released a new single, which was supposedly the title song for my new album. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, that album never got released. And um, DJ Tommy, who was my partner in CMD, was releasing a new album, and he took one of my old songs that was supposed to be released on that album and put it on his album. And um, that's the story of that. You know, I haven't been in the studio to record any of my songs in a long time, and I don't know exactly when I will be. I'm, I'm contemplating an album, um, but I, I think that the album is, is really important for my, not only my career, but my life, I think. Um, it's the only way I directly get to speak to people or my fans without having a filter. Um, a lot of times I speak through media, they take four words and then they take another four <laughs> words and they add them together and then it becomes a total different thing. Right. So, but I've been in the studio recording one of my new artists right now and um, it's, it's, it's been fun being back in the studio, but I love acting a lot more than music. Do you? Yeah, I love acting a lot more than music. Uh, being in the studio really pains me. Um, <laughs> like 10 hours, 15 hours in the studio, I feel like yeah. a a zoo animal in a box with someone really like, okay move you know jump jump and it's like ah, I can't right now I, can't, I don't I don't I don't like the feeling of that 
So I don't know about the music part, but I, I definitely think that my company will be releasing uh, quite a few music releases that will be fresh and uh, new for the Asian market. So you're opening up a clot store here in Shank Clot. Where did the name come from? Clot is actually, a lot of people ask me why I use that name. They say yeah. it's a bad, it's, it, it ref, ref, references a bad thing. But the way that, it's not a blood clot. No, it's just no a clot. blockage. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no blockage. It, it's basically, when I started this company, I had, I had finished reading a book called The Tipping Point uh, by Malcolm Gladwell. Sure. And basically inside that, it says that basically if you can see a trend that hasn't been really, um, you know, done a lot in a certain area, that if you're the first one, you will always have a cushion of, like it's like a falling domino effect. If you're the first domino, you'll never hit the ground. So clot basically means it's, it's the gathering point of all these ideas and designers and musicians and cultures and lifestyles and we put them all into one place which is clot and we kind of let it explode into the culture here and that's the that's where we came up with the name of clot and it's working I, honestly i am amazed at what you're juggling here as you say you've kind of been out of the spotlight and yet you've got so much going on in your life it's incredible how do you balance this well you know it's, it was kind of a blessing in disguise, I guess, what, what, what had happened to me because I was going so fast, filming movies, doing a record, I got stores opening, I had my own media company that I had to deal with my own artists, and um, it caught up to me. It really caught up to me. And, and you know, in the past year and a half, I've had a lot of time to really use my brain to, to benefit the companies that I, I personally own. I mean, I, I open these companies because you know, I, not many people might know this, but um, in my second or third year of my career, I was sold. I you was were like, sold. I was sold. Like a like, like, like personally. Like, I one day I was with Company A, mm -hmm. and then overnight I was Company B without even knowing. So I felt I had no control over my life, and I had no control over who people think Edison Chen is. So I kind of took a little trip, and I read that book, and I, I met a lot of people in Japan. And that's kind of why I started this company is, is because, you know, I think that I need to own something so that someone can't just pull the carpet from underneath. And thank God I started those companies because that carpet was definitely pulled. Look, you you've know? referenced it a couple of times, and I know it's not a subject you like talking about, but you were at the center of one of the biggest entertainment scandals in Hong Kong. Some people saw you as the villain, others saw you as a victim. So after about a year and a half, uh, and you've had all this time to reflect on the whole experience, a lot of people are wondering, how do you see yourself? Um, you know, I've kind of gotten past, past all that, really. Um, it took me a little while. In the beginning, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know if I was the villain or if I was the victim. A lot of people said I was doing things wrong. I was trying to find out what I did wrong to, to, to really grasp what had happened, you know? And, you know, I mean, I'm... I, I can't really tell about what exactly, if I'm the villain or if I'm the victim. In my world, I'm just Edison Chen and I just try to live with myself every day and I think I've gotten past that and I think that I've learned a lot of things. Um, everything happens for a reason. You know, right. What doesn't kill me can only make me stronger. And I've, I've used this time and instead of uh, sitting at home and mourning and, and thinking, oh no, what to do, what to do, I've actually proactively done something to further enrich my life and now I've had the time to reevaluate myself and reevaluate my life and figure out what the next steps are so you know the the nightmare the endless nightmare mm -hmm. is is not endless anymore and it's ended so I'm thankful for all the people that have supported me and you know all the people that have stood by me because it definitely wasn't wasn't an easy time and um, you know I just I just hope that everyone can learn a thing or two from it because I definitely have yeah, there are a lot of experiences that I'm sure people have different thoughts about after they happen, and the best thing you could do is take the positive out of it and move on, right? Yeah, and, and I hopefully, with my hard work and with the with the positive things that I'm trying to do, um, I can inspire some youths to live a better life. <laughs> well, I have to say, with a new movie, new song, you got the new stores. It sounds like you're back. It's terrific. It's good to see that. It's really great to see you up in the positive. So you're a couple years older, a little bit wiser, but still a damn good looking Edison Chin, I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So what can we expect from you that you haven't covered so far in the future? Uh, 
I'm an entertainer, and I think that that's what I need to do. You are indeed. You know what? I really appreciate you coming by Asia Uncut. I know you've had a lot of opportunities to talk in the places, and uh, you haven't spoken that much, so we're really happy you joined us here tonight. Thanks for making the Thank trip. Thank you for out. having me. You bet. Thank you. Edison Chen, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more Asia Uncut after that.